Well, the first thing, I proceed by way of analogy, and then I'll see if it's adequate for answering your question. I'm doing a demonstration in San Jose. This is in ancient times, several thousand years ago. In San Jose, and it's a phobia. It's one of the things that NOP got infamous for was fast phobia and get rid of phobia. So I'm doing a demonstration, I'm doing a series of demonstrations. At the end of this, there's a couple of guys in the front watching really closely, making notes. And so at the end of this thing, they're, they're in a queue to say something. So we get to them in the queue, and they go, hey, that was impressive. Congratulations. Nice patterning. Uh, ask a couple questions. They go, now, this stuff was easy. We have clients that are not easy. Would you like a challenge? Turns out these are two physicians from the uh, Veterans Hospital in Palo Alto, California. And they've got the acute post-traumatic stress, wigged out guys, women who have come out of war zones. And, um, and everything that I did in these public demonstrations, I went, to the, I went to the hospital. I did there with one addition, which was essential. There was no, do you know the basic uh, phobia cure? Have you seen or heard that or no? Anybody got a phobia they don't want? It'd be easier to demonstrate than describe it. Come here, man. Okay, no content. I don't want any content from the guy. Can you put whatever the context, object, person, experience with your phobic of over there? Okay, let's see if it's really, I'm, I'm not impressed, so I'm going to push you toward it and, t you know. You really want to go there? Oh, okay. Well, come on, you're going to go there or not go there? Push back or go? Okay, so he's put, now, do you see a difference from your side of this picture? I can feel it. I mean, he's, quote, resisting my move, my, my trying to push him forward. Okay, so I don't want to push him in there. I'm going to give him something else to do. Okay. The classic, the most classic, most simplest, oldest one, I think. Can you look over there without feeling anything here that belongs over there? Um, not really. Nice. Not really, okay. So you do a disassociation. This is not an adequate disassociation. So I go, leave Matt as he is right here, right here. Shake, shake off and step over here if you would. Come on over here by me. Okay, can you see Matt standing there? He's looking at what's going on over there, right? right. But... When you look at him, you're cool here, right? Huh, okay. So if you look from him to what he's looking at, what happens? That's what I'm looking for. All right. <laughs> so, so a double disassociation. See, I, I left the instructions vague. I said, see the context or object or thing, experience, which you're phobic of over there. So he goes into the state. It's very clear that part of what's happening there is also happening here. I make the question so you're all aware of it. Then I have him sh escape the tyranny, the physiology of the partial response, phobic response he made here. He steps over here and first looks at Matt. You can see Matt easily. And look at the difference in the physiology. You can see Matt here. And then I no notice that he spontaneously looks over here. He did that before I gave him the instruction. So I tell him to do what he's doing. Leadership is sometimes figuring out which way the crowd's moving and running and getting in front. And sometimes it is a creative act. But in this case, he gave me what I needed. So I asked him to, and now I calibrate. So he can look at Matt over here, no problem. From here, he can look over there. This Matt can't. If you want to talk about theater of the absurd, you with me? Remember, what we, we are actors directors and producers of theater of the absurd. That's what we do in change work. This thing is not happening here, but he's reacting to it as if it's happening here. Crazy stuff. Okay, so what I would like you to do is to say internally to Matt here, oh, by the way, you want to give him some help or is he okay? You want to, yeah, want to give him a little, give him little help. help. Okay, so tell him to breathe or whatever necessary. <laughs> which will change his state so he can watch what's going on over there like you are. You can just look at it as a movie. 
doesn't touch you. One choice you have, by the way, if as you're giving instructions, if you feel so inclined, you could walk back over carrying this stave and show him directly by becoming him. Calibration, mother of all skill sets. Now you can ask him, are do you do you have the same feelings there that you had when you were over here? Okay. You can ask him, and you check the congruency of the response, but what if we apply the, the principle? The only justification for a question is to provoke a nonverbal response. So you're testing the congruency of the state, right? So he can look and listen to this now. What I want you to do, it's a snapshot, right? In a moment, and now I could anchor. Oh, let's do that. I'll, I'll anchor. Okay. <laughs> I'm anchoring you here, and you can continue to breathe and all this stuff, oh boy. And what I want you to do is, for the last time, I want you to watch him go through this over there. So he sees and hears for the last time this whole damn thing as a way of you learning, if there's anything there for you to learn, how to ensure you don't find yourself in this situation in the future, insofar as that's possible. Do you understand me? So watch and listen as you breathe, and I hold you here to the original incident that occurred, or the worst example of this class of events, until it's complete. When it's complete, let me know. Take your time. Your job is to learn anything you need to learn from this damn thing so we can leave it behind. Okay. And, of course, my job, this is where I earn my, my, job, my pay, just like Peter as guardian of my physiology, guardian of physiology. If I had seen any slippage, I probably would have increased pressure, something subtle like that. <laughs> okay. And by the way, people are very serious about these things. Humor. <laughs> Humor is very useful. This is theater of the absurd. If you forget it, they will. Okay, so he did a job for you. So call him out of context. So come over here, man. Reach out. Take him by the shoulders so you can actually feel what he's feeling like. Reassure him. Whatever you need to tell him, whatever your metaphors, whatever reassurances, he lived through this. And you can guarantee this because you're from his future. He did live through this. Okay. Grab his shoulders once again. When you see on his face and you feel in your touch that he is reassured that he'll never have to do this again, I want you to slowly, literally fold him into your body slowly and feel sort of a burst of liberated possibility as he comes internal to you. And you see that release at the end. You're always looking for that last release where... What's going to happen? He could feel it coming in. There it is. Okay, so now I got to walk around. I got to distract him. <coughs> what's been, what what language is that he's got going there? Um, Spanish. No, so that's correct. Do you know what it says? Um, Who can tell? Because part of it. So it says vida de la de la playa. He's a playa. Uh, pl playa <laughs> turns out that <laughs> he is indeed, <laughs> but. Uh, the playa actually means beach in Spanish. Oh. So, so life on the beach or of the beach. Sueños del verano. You want to guess about sueños? Sounds like it. Sounds. Sounds like, yeah. Dreams, right? Yeah. Exactly what you were about to say, right? Yeah, yeah great. Right. Nice. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the verano. Uh, that's a season. You want to guess which season that is? Uh, August like summer. Oh, let's go with that. Okay. <laughs> Learning Spanish as part of his change process. Take a look. That's the test, right? So you subject him to the, quote, negative anchor. That's what that stuff is. Does he deal with it? Ask him. Did you deal with it? Yeah. What are you doing standing here? Go sit down. <laughs> <laughs> nice job.
Now, I did that demonstration to answer some of the questions. Does anybody have any idea what? post traumatic stress syndrome. Thank you, Francesca. The only difference between what I just demonstrated and the vets who were acute, I mean, these people were just wiped out. I mean, if, when you see someone you're close to explode, the sounds, the smells, I mean, it's, it's horrific. So it's quite understandable that these people are in trouble. The only difference was I couldn't face them straight on. If I faced them straight on to the representation, bam, they'd fall into it every time. No anchor, no triple, quadruple, quintuple disassociation would hold against the power of that concept. I couldn't get the disassociation I needed. What would I do? What would you do? Actually, actually, this before, yeah. Okay, so you could shift that, right? What could you do? It's a more general principle, yeah. Perfect. So face him away, 90 degrees. He can't see anything officially, and shut down the volume of the sounds. Now you give him a volume control. You tell him, turn it up, turn it off. Do you hear anything? Yeah, or it didn't make any sense. Right? Okay, well, turn it up, leave it a little bit more. Okay, all the time you're calibrating. So you put him in charge, or her in charge, of the, essentially, of their own response by limiting access to the context. If the sights and the sounds of this context are unbearably uh, effective in dragging them back into the regressed experience, well, then you reduce the power of that. And how do you reduce that? Volume control here until they can turn it on and leave it on. Then a glance, then a slightly more prolonged glance, then another. And slowly you'll see the body start to orient. In a couple of cases, it took 20 minutes of this decomposition, deconstruction. Is that what I'm doing? OK. This deconstruction of a historical context before they could face it full on without collapsing into it. But that's the only difference. The rest of it went just as Matt and I did it. <laughs>